And it's so, so important to, to have that because many times if you photograph people, you may have an hour with them to photograph them or you may have just a couple of minutes, maybe even 60 seconds. I have a picture of Bobby Flay that I shot. I had one minute to shoot his portrait. And you have to be able to connect and react. And there was a very special device that connected the two of us to get him to be more excited about having his portrait made, even though he's on TV. Connecting with people when you photograph is everything. And we'll talk about that. But just to give you a little background on who I am, I come from New York. I've been with Nikon for 35 years. Back in the day when they had want ads in the newspapers, my dad found one that said there's a job at Nikon. And I had been hired by another camera company, went on that interview, got a full-time job with Nikon. 35 years later, I stand here with you guys at this WPPI show. I grew up in action, action photography. I love sports. I love the moments within sports. The queen goes to the Kentucky Derby and Justify wins uh, the Triple Crown in New York. And that action led me to rock and roll photography and shooting rock and roll with a lot of action and treating it like it was sports photography. But after a while, I started to isolate on different performers and thinking, everything I shoot can be a portrait. Anything with a subject, a person, or an animal in it can be a portrait. I love wildlife photography, so a mix of that action combined with the potential for portraits. Because animals together, adults and children, are kind of just like people. And when you find those intimate moments, we're going to talk about genuine moments all the time throughout this program, that's what we're looking for. That's what I look for. I look for eye contact. We're going to talk a lot about eye contact. And when you let people in. So when you're trying to work with people, I'm looking around. I say eye contact. If you look at me and you stay with me, maybe I can engage with you more. If you look away real quick, maybe I'm making you uncomfortable. And it's my job to make you feel comfortable. So even with animals, like monkeys in the zoo, I find portrait opportunities. Now, I'm going to show you this picture, an early picture of my dad. Somebody photographed his portrait. I have no idea. But he photographed his love of photography. So the prop is his camera. And my dad's in the picture. My dad was an avid photographer. And this is one of the first pictures I have of myself, of a portrait of my mom and me sitting on the bed. And just look around the photo to see some of the things going on. The gestures, the moments, just a little finger touching the lip. All of those things that we talk about in portrait photography that you'll hear around this convention and anywhere you go to be educated to understand that those little things make it happen. So we're not going to dig into all of this, but moments, gesture, eye contact, the location you're shooting in, the quality of light, the lens choices that you make, and that genuine connection that you have with the subject will help your portraits along. But think about how you like to be photographed. How do you feel when a bad picture is taken of you? And Matthew said it. You make your subjects feel beautiful. That's your job. I hate when people make bad pictures of me and post them on the internet. I look 20 pounds heavier. It's a bad angle. You got my bald spot. Dignify me a little bit. Give me a little help here. But you got to have fun with it. You have to have a sense of humor with it all. Jerry Guiones. Anybody know Jerry Guiones? Happens to work here at WPPI, one of the best speakers, most celebrated photographers. One of my favorite portraits of all time, and I use it for all of the work and promotion that we do because I just love the way he posed me and made me look, and he makes me feel great. That is our job as portrait photographers, to make our subjects feel great. But when we think about this and we talk about this, you want to understand how to connect. And that involves research. You may not have time for that research. I'm going to show you that with the shots of the kids from the Ronald McDonald House. But to find them, understand their likes and loves. Recognize their mood and attitude in a moment. Our producer, Brian, doesn't like his picture taken. I have to find him in the right moment to make his portrait. Just think about all these things, the mood, the attitude, the direction, and, and just being able to understand their process, engaging them in the process as well. So many times with digital, how many times have you done this, photographing especially children? You turn the camera around to the picture you just shot of them, first picture they don't want taken, and all of a sudden they're jumping in. They want to be photographed. They see themselves. They get excited. So immerse yourself into their lives. That's another thing. If you have the time to be with somebody, if you can build a relationship. You know, we talk about the secrets to life. To me, relationships are everything. Secrets in business, relationships are everything. So how you connect with people. Immersing yourself uh, in their lives makes you understand them more so you can anticipate the things that you can and can't do. So being connected with that personal world, you know, just really looking for an amazing balance between their lives and the types of portraits that you're trying to make. Um, 
Lots of things to think about. Understanding their tolerance. Involving your subjects, create, dignify. That's what we want to do. So, I start off with one of my favorite people to photograph. He lives here in Las Vegas, Headley Jones. Headley bought these sunglasses. They were 500 bucks. He lost them a day later. His wife just totally tore them apart. But I photograph Headley time and time again. And to me, to really demonstrate the eye contact, to demonstrate how you can draw a viewer in, to connect with you as a photographer with that subject, how do you feel when Headley's eyes are turned away? How about the eyes looking at you with a big smile? But how about the eyes with the smile gone? It's three different personalities from Headley that I'm trying to show you here. And it's so subjective, but this is my favorite portrait of Headley. Eye contact, eye contact, eye contact. Baron Woolman, famous rock photographer, first ever Rolling Stone magazine photographer at Photo Plus Expo with the Noc Nikkor, uh, the uh, .95 lens. Most of the lenses I use in portrait, 2470 and the 105. Eye contact, my niece's uh, son. You draw, you're drawn into that picture through the eyes. I hope that connects with you. Big brown eyes, beautiful eyelashes, drawn in. Little Eliana, one of my favorite subjects, my new family. Eliana, at first, a bit distant, didn't want to connect with me, but over time, she sees me, she recognizes me. We don't even speak together. She doesn't talk to me. She speaks to me through her eyes. You just wait for these opportunities. You can't tell me there's not a connection. Now, as we continue to, to, to work together, we play together, she touches my camera. She sees the picture. She gets excited. That's how you connect with people and you get better pictures. Now, there are times you can't communicate at all. There are many times when I photograph the Ronald McDonald House, I cannot communicate. We don't speak the same language. But you have to figure out through eyes and gestures and things that you can do. I love location shooting. You know how Bobby Flay and I connected? This is way back when. Horse race owner, I was shooting for Blood Horse magazine. Didn't want to give me the time of day. I got I to gotta submit a picture. He pulls out his T-Mobile sidekick. I had the same exact device. I pulled it out and said, what do you think of this? All of a sudden, he opens up. Oh my god, it's a great device. I can see things. It's in color. I can see my emails differently. And hey, can we have more time? Just come upstairs. Let's make a picture. 60 seconds to do that. Former art teacher I found in Florida 35 years after I graduated. Pauline Jonasson, my favorite person in the world, favorite teacher in the world. And we connected through her art. We talked about art. She pulls out St. Michael in the art that she's doing now with painting with gold and certain, certain um, paints. And, and, and I just, I love it because it's her in the moment. And it's our job to make people laugh and feel comfortable. So her smile uh, and all the pictures, the history of her family, that's what photography is about. It doesn't have to be a beautiful portrait. It's about these moments and memories. My niece and nephew are crazy. Snowboarders, downhill mountain bikers, <laughs> this one's a stretch and not for everybody, but we decided they were going to get married on the top of Killington Mountain at the summit. And then we were going to ride down and take portraits along the way. We didn't realize though the mountain would be closed because it was raining and snowing in different parts. So a lot of mud. But when we got down to the areas, we wanted that foliage picture in October. And if you ever want to know what it's like to ride down a big muddy mountain, this is what you look like afterwards. But connect with it. Sometimes you're jumping into something you may not do. It's a physical thing. May not be able to do it, but I'm an avid mountain biker. I said, I'm going to do this. I've never downhill before, but I made that portrait. I do a lot of portrait work with our ambassadors. And when the Z7 was introduced, I did a tour around the country with four of our, our best photographers. And I've learned about these people through the years. Dixie is a beautiful young lady. Don't take a bad picture of her. She loves her smile. Catch her in a moment. Make her laugh. That's the picture she loves. <laughs> Our badass friend, Jerry Guionis. I was at his house. We were shooting at his house. He had a model up in front of this white, you know, white boy. Come on, dude, you're coming in. I got to shoot a gritty portrait of you. This picture hangs in his house. That's how I know he loves it. A big, big print on his wall. But I love that attitude. And our last speaker, Matthew Jordan Smith. Man, is Matthew not the most beautiful man standing up here ever? Right? I don't know if he's left or right. He's got to catch a flight back to Tokyo. But my job, I saw light coming through the window, have to react quick. We, during a, a lunch break, jump into this setting with the light coming through the windows. It's going to change within five minutes. And all I could think of doing was making Matthew laugh. And I don't want to say what I said to Matthew to make him laugh. I can't say it up on stage, but I got him going. And to me, it's the big difference. Okay, I got that serious portrait on the left, but I love the picture. 
you know, the, you're, you're right. I, I love this picture on the left. That's Matthew Jordan Smith. That's the guy I know. Do I ever see him that serious? Rarely. So connect them, see with them. Rescue animals, that's so, from a group called Rescue Inc. Beautiful, surreptitious moment when a flock of seagulls takes off. You ever photograph a dog with a person? The dog focused on the flock of seagulls. They were looking in the same direction. I snapped the picture. Moments, even in commercial shoots. I took one of our models from a D700 shoot with Sherry Steinberg and Headley Jones from many years ago in Union Station in LA. I saw this reflection, just gently guided the model over and said, do me a favor, just sit down and relax. And a little guide of a turn of the head to a certain direction to find this reflection with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. A lot of people ask, how do you become better at portraits? Photograph your friends, the people you know, the people that you can work with. Although I didn't have a lot of time with this Pulitzer Prize winning photographer, John White. John is one of my favorite spiritual mentors on the planet. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer with the Chicago uh, Sun-Times way back when. And he's worked with people like Muhammad Ali and Nelson Mandela and the Reverend Jesse Jackson and archbishops. And I turned to him so many times when I need that little uplifting in spirituality. He loves his camera, so I got pictures of him connecting with his camera. This was at the Eddie Adams workshop within 10 minutes. Again, getting him to pose and do different things. Get your subjects to do different things within that few minutes that you have because not everything's gonna work. How many of you throw away any of your pictures or don't use them? <laughs> it's a reality. You shoot. The best photographers in the world, Rich Clarkson once said, are the photographers that don't show the bad stuff, right? I got this beautiful picture of him with the camera up to his eye, but it's the moment I made him laugh and his hands came up to his face, that was the moment for me. That was the excitement. That was the genuine moment that I've been looking for with him during that entire time. I could stare at this picture forever, it makes me feel so good. It makes him feel good. I've done my job and I gave him a picture that he loves. But now I'm gonna dig in a little bit deeper with the subjects from the Ronald McDonald House. I've been working with the Ronald McDonald House probably about eight years now. I, I don't even remember when it started. And Nikon asked me to come in and photograph portraits seasonally in the spring and the fall of these children. I didn't know what I was getting into. And when I first started, my approach was to disconnect. Big mistake. I don't want to know what they're going through. I don't want to know what the disease is. I don't want to know what the prognosis is. I don't want to know what medications they're on. Because if I do that, I'm going to connect it. I'm emotionally not going to be able to do it. But you learn one thing when you go into that house. It's not about me, it's about them. And we're supposed to be funny. We're supposed to laugh. It's the house that love built, so we're supposed to bring love. And I have my moments. I gotta go to the car every once in a while. I have to fake going to the bathroom just to break away. When you see a kid start to plummet for medication in the middle of trying to photograph them. But it's the relationships I built. Perfect example of show the monitor to the kids and they'll react to it, and now they will perform for you. Maybe you don't want that, but when I do this, it's kind of a, a run and shoot process. These kids are running all over the place. Sometimes the medication hypes them up, hops them up. But go back to these thoughts, being connected to their personal world. I've never had to be more connected, because when I change my world by connecting into theirs and knowing their names, knowing the details, knowing what they're going through, watching their Facebook posts of updates, I have to understand their tolerance for shooting because of the, of the meds. Maybe they don't have a lot of time. One little girl, Lily, you'll see a picture of her with a dog. Um, a lot of times the medications hit her, she's so tiny, we don't have a lot of time. Now I get the parents in the process. I've actually had one of the mothers, Lori, use reflectors for me. And everybody gets involved, other families get involved in the same shoots and we have such a blast. But you gotta create authenticity, but you have to also dignify the subject. That's the thing I was missing early on. That's the thing, when I got into this, I called Amy Vitale, DeAnthus Morris, two ambassadors of Nikon that gave me the best advice ever, and it was the word dignity. When do I shoot? When don't I shoot? If they're crying, do I shoot? If I... And that really is up to you and the parent. And I've worked that out with some parents. You'll see a little kid, Dylan, coming up, that the mother, Teresa, actually, <laughs> Mother Teresa, her mother's, the mother's name is Teresa, and she asked me to photograph Dylan, I said, why? She says, I want you to document him so when he's 20 and 30 years old, he'll know exactly what he went through. But photographing around the house, again, it's very quick, very quick shooting, quick reactions, beautiful glass ceiling in the main uh, playroom, which brings nice light in sometimes. Sometimes I have to supplement it. A lot of times I don't use anything but ISO. Little Lily loves the service dogs. 
and that's when she connects the most with me, so we make these types of pictures. I had a great conversation with this young man about basketball. I know nothing about basketball, but he talked to me about what he loves, and that's all that matters, and he gave me his time. And there are other times I just stand off with a longer lens, the 70 millimeter or the 105, and, and, and photograph the interaction between a grandfather and his son. Zoe, Zo Zofia Alexandria, you're going to hear more about Zoe as we go, one of my favorite subjects over the last three years. I photographed her and her mother time and time again. And it's always being there, ready to react for that moment. Zoe falls, mom picks her up, cradles her and starts to walk towards me. You have to be ready to shoot. Autofocus, everything worked in my favor to make that kind of shot. But when the families let you in and you have that connection of love, then you find them in their private moments. You're invited into their world. You're invited into their rooms. You're invited into their lives in a very different way. Doesn't mean we have a lot of time to work together, but we do it. And this is Caroline of the Swihearts. Four sick children that come through the house. They're in New York right now with two of the kids. And everybody's going through a tough time, but we make it work and we make it laugh. Stay connected to the people you shoot. You never know when you're gonna see them again. I photographed Pamela when she was in the house uh, going through a bone marrow transplant. Found her eight years later this year when I saw her. You tell me those eyes aren't standing out at you as the thing that, oh my God, I know this girl, who is this? And it turns out it was Pamela grown up and I photographed her and her brother. Connecting, connecting. Peyton was born at one pound. Little over one pound. A preemie. Now beautiful little girl that runs around. And finding moments. This is actually a picture made when she was hiding behind her mother and then jumped out and I snapped off the picture. I'm rattling off more pictures than I use. I will shoot a ton of pictures just to get this one. Four years I've been following little Callie. Faces, her disease is called faces, P-H-A-C-E-S. Little tumors have been growing inside her face that doctors have had to constantly remove through radiation and surgeries. She wants to be a model, so why not make her a model? I've watched her grow over the last four years. She and her mom, Amber, have let me into their lives, and these connections just continue to grow. But you know what we do most of the time? We talk. Yes, we talk. She tells me the things she loves. We talk about shows. We talk about music. She asked me at this point in time to marry her. Would I dance with her? I did. That's my little Callie, Princess Callie. But when she takes off and she goes away, those are moments that I have to be there to connect with her when the airlift services takes her off the island back to her home in Syracuse. I love these moments, and again, another family that's allowing me to document her life that have let me in to tell their story. Tell their story. Sometimes it's, it's a tough story to tell. Sometimes it's not. Young lady, Haley Garofalo, at the time lived in Vegas. Now she lives in Idaho or somewhere in the mountains. And um, she was too sick to go to her prom. So the school in the local neighborhood brought the prom to her. I immediately begged to go out to Vegas to photograph her to make one portrait of her that she could love for that night that reminds her of what she went through. Do you know for seven days she couldn't get out of bed for about four hours of standing up? I have no problems in the world when I have to deal with this. It puts everything in my life in perspective. Sometimes you go into the hospital, you have to follow rules, you have to talk to nurses and doctors, you have to see what's okay. You don't photograph any of the hardware there. But this was on Thanksgiving morning when Gianna and her daughter Aaliyah were dressed, they dressed, the nurses dressed up Aaliyah, so I ran in there to take pictures on Thanksgiving morning to just try to give her a memory, a moment. You know, she shoots a ton on her cell phone, makes a lot of nice pictures, but I wanted to give her a special moment. Connecting, these families come together and you find those connections between them. So not only connecting with them as a photographer, but connecting with them together. We're family now, this doesn't end, it doesn't quit. We'll go back home and I'll shoot some more. There's always a picture to be made. Callie and Zoe, the best of friends. They've grown together, they had grown together. Sadly, Zoe just passed away at six years old. Don't be sad, yeah, it hurts, it, we mourn. But I'm talking to her mom constantly about the things we're gonna do in memory of Zoe. And the one thing her mom said, which to me was so prolific, said after all of this, Mike, I go back to the pictures. That's what I have left. All the pictures she's taken with her cell phone or her, her Nikon digital camera uh, and all the photos I've taken. And it is an honor to say I know Zoe, who's an angel for us now. 
Caroline and Kendall come together. Caroline's uh, almost 20, Kendall's 15, but they become the best of friends. Caroline flies to Virginia while Kendall is in a coma and Kendall wakes up. They're back at the house today. Kendall came to visit Caroline to show her some love. I want to get back there to photograph them. Great story, Bailey Kern. Bailey's a beautiful young lady. She has her head shaved for a surgery. She goes out in public to a grocery store and somebody innocently calls her sir. I got to connect real fast with this young lady to get her to understand. As her mom calls me and said she was devastated, I said, give me five minutes. Let me shoot one picture to prove to her it's not about her hair. And we made this portrait. And you have to remember that this is not the end. They will come back and she will grow her hair back. And then she came back to the house last week and they shaved her head again for another surgery. But this is a moment I went in when her hair was long and beautiful. We made great studio portraits, put up a backdrop, a little bit of lights. But then she has her head shaved again. I don't have those pictures here. But what these pictures do empower these people to say, I don't need hair. And for the very first time, I'm not going to read all the dialogue, uh, on Valentine's night, she went out with her husband Lance for the very first time without a wig because she didn't feel intimidated about hair. She didn't feel any less beautiful without hair. I ask any of you ladies in the audience at any time in life, have you ever had to shave your head and go out in public? How would that make you feel? Can you deal with that? But we're making them happy. This is Dylan following Dylan now for several years. We go to kindergarten together. I engage him in the process. I let him play with the cameras. Before we ever shoot, we wrestle on the floor. He tries to beat me up. I let him win. Sorry, Dylan, I let you win. He loves his superheroes, but you follow their lives. His birthdays. Just recently, my girlfriend and I went to his eighth birthday. We jumped off a plane from CES, go to his eighth birthday just to make pictures and dignify him as the loving superhero that he is. Make him larger than life. You engage within the process. I apologize for this picture, it's horrendous. Wig parties, makeup artists. Jen, beautiful makeup artist, making up Callie. We do these wig parties. We watch as they cut the hair. Because doctors won't shave the head, you know, perfectly. They're not fashion people, they're not hairstylists. They need to open a place so they can put a, a cut so they can go in for surgery. They cut the hair themselves, they shave the heads. They create their own styles. They put on wigs in this particular party. We had a wig party. I jump in to photograph when Lori says, Mike, can you come in and take pictures? This is going to be hysterical. I, again, I apologize for me. That was not fair to you guys. But at one moment, this is where it all turned around. Caroline and Kendall ripped off the wigs, and I said, stand there. They said, take our picture now. And this started a whole movement of realization. We don't need wigs. We don't need hair. We just need their time. We want to connect with beauty and the right light and dignify them as, as best we can. She grabs my hat. Kendall's a pip. We call them the Dilly Twins. Kendall's a little hysterical, grabs my hat, we take pictures, we glamorize it. I think of Jerry Guillaume is what would Jerry do? And then getting the mom involved, this is that picture I was talking about. Lori takes a mirror, flashes the light in the face outside on a little balcony, and we make this portrait. And at the end of the day, you're hoping that one moment, that one click of a shutter, makes all the difference for Caroline to realize it's not about her hair. We call them trophies, that's what the name is. These aren't stitches, they're not scars, they're trophies. Every time they go through surgery is another win for them. It's another way of trying to make them feel better, another way of them growing as a child, growing <laughs> in maturity, and probably having more maturity than the most adults that I know for what they've gone through. It's really, really tough. And you wait for those moments where even after a good portrait shoot where we get the makeup done, we just go in the room and we play how am I connecting with them? I am an idiot. I am a comedian. I will do the stupidest things like putting on wigs and lipstick if it makes them smile. If it connects with them, that's the way I want to do it. So as I close down, one of the things, that, how do I put things together? My love of rock and roll and drummers. And over the past several years, we started a project called Drummer Love. If I work with a drummer, the drummer has to make a donation to the Ronald McDonald House so they'll never see the pictures. Every one of them says yes right away. I don't care if they spend five bucks, 50 bucks. Lynn Goldsmith, a prolific rock photographer. You don't know Lynn, look her up. One of the most generous people I know. After I worked with her and did some re remote work and photography for KISS when they came to New York, made a donation that covered the entire Ronald McDonald house, every room, for one full month. And each room is valued at 25 bucks. Tissue paper, toilet paper, you name it, it has to be there. Now, 
Here's the beautiful part of the Zoe story. Right now, I believe she's an angel watching over us. I had my time. I cried like everybody else. I had the dilemma of praying for her life or praying for just her healing. And it wasn't, it wasn't the plan. It wasn't God's plan. We accept that, right? Six years old. This is one of the pictures they used in the memorial service because it was one of the rare pictures where she didn't have a feeding tube. And her mom and I are talking about the Zofia Alexandria Foundation that we're going to build to support families in need, not just for medical and, and, and paying bills in the hospital, but to give them life experiences, portrait shoots, traveling, anything that brings a smile to their face. So I appreciate your time. We only have 30 minutes here. And if you want to reach out to me and see some of the work I do, here are my handles for Facebook and Instagram. Connect with the subjects the best way you can. And I promise you the reward is going to be tremendous. So thank you guys for your time. And we're going to take about a 15-minute break. Drink up, Brian. And uh, we'll see you back here in uh, 15 minutes.